I'm Helena Price. I'm a photographer based in San Francisco, California in a cabin in the woods near Healdsburg. To be a freelancer means to me being free. For me, it means having your own runway to do what you want and to work as hard as you want and to be your own boss and to be in control of the path that you want to take and the kind of work that you want to make and the kind of people you want to work with. You have a little bit less choice in the beginning. You kind of take what you can get. But um, I think the, the biggest thing for me is the freedom to do the work that I want. And maybe I'm not getting paid to make that work in the beginning, but I'm making that work so that someone else will hire me to make more of that work later. So my start as a freelancer happened kind of overnight, but also was a really slow process. I worked in Silicon Valley for many years before I became a photographer, and I didn't know at the time, but all of the work that I was doing in those years in Silicon Valley were actually fueling my freelance career that I wasn't even sure I was gonna have yet. That is everything from building a network of people that you know and you love and you've done nice things for and um, shown interest in people without asking for anything in return, learning immeasurable amounts of skills, like learning, just soaking in everything you can around you, whether that's how to build a business or how to work with people or you know how to communicate um, what you're trying to say, like all of these skills um, that you can take with you and become a freelancer. All of those things uh, took years to develop. And so, you know, whether you're working a full-time job now, which if you wanna be a freelancer, eventually you're probably working a full-time job now, um, that all is prep work um, for being a freelancer. But when I made the jump to freelance, it was very fast. Um, I kind of quit my job. Uh, to be a photographer, which is crazy, because I didn't have a real plan and I didn't have a savings account and um, I, I wasn't totally sure what I was gonna do, but it turns out that all of those skills that I've been building over the years fed what I'm doing now. When I started shooting as a hobby in 2013 on the side, um, I was shooting on nights and weekends um, while I had a full-time job and I immediately made a website where I put my work. I actually already had a Tumblr, which I mostly used to look at other people's work and not share work, but Tumblr really became the place where I started posting. Whether or not that's the place now, you know, that's another story, but really just finding a place online, maybe that's Instagram or a website, you know, just posting work as soon as you make it. Like I just would shoot hundreds of photos every weekend and then immediately post them to Tumblr. And it was fun, you know, I spent every night editing, like it was, I had something photographic to do every day after work and that was really nice. But I think the trick is just to not overthink it too much in the beginning, like just make a ton of work and post it on Instagram or your blog or whatever. And then, you know, maybe after a month, you have enough work that you can kind of sift through and be like, you know, those five photos really represent what I want uh, to show people. And then you put those on your website. And then maybe a month later, you've made a few hundred more photos and you can choose like 10 that you thought were exceptional and then put those on your website. And that's basically what I did. And after four months, I had a full portfolio of work that I just shot on the weekends. Charging is such a toughie. You know, that is the big question. And one thing that I learned early on is that no one charges the same thing and no one knows what to charge. You really just have to guess and ask around and research and then ch charge what you're comfortable with and what you, not even what you feel like you're worth, like just figure out market rate and, and be somewhere in that range. So for me in the beginning as a photographer, I, decided, you know, I'm gonna work in Silicon Valley and Silicon Valley isn't used to working with photographers. So I'm just gonna figure out what like a, a freelance, a high-end freelance designer or developer would charge hourly. And I'm gonna charge per hour because that's what Silicon Valley um, understood at the time. And so that's what I did the first couple of years. I was just getting started as a photographer. And so I could have easily been like, oh, well, I don't have experience. Like maybe I'll charge $20 an hour, but it's like, no, you can't 
put emotions into it. You can't like put your own self-loathing into it. You just have to figure out what a lot of people are charging and charge that and just see like, and if people hire you for that, then keep charging that. And if you get books solid, charge more. And if no one's hiring you, charge less. You just kind of have to throw a number out there and see what sticks in the beginning. Ooh, to be a freelancer, you have to want to run your own business. Like being a freelancer is running your own business. Like some people don't realize that where I'll reference my business and they're like, but you're a photographer. And I'm like, yes, I own a photo business. Like I don't just click buttons, I run the business. And so that's something to keep in mind. Like when you make the jump into being your own person and being your own boss, like there's invoicing, there's estimates, there's actual finance, there's budget keeping, there's paying taxes, there's all this stuff that you didn't have to worry about when you had a full-time job. And you know, that's just the money side. Then you have business development. You have to go out and get clients. You have to schmooze. You have to negotiate on the phone. Uh, you have to be comfortable pricing yourself and negotiating, like all of those things. Um, you've got to become comfortable with and it won't necessarily be comfortable in the beginning, but you have to feel a little bit energized by the idea of it. I think another important thing uh, to be a freelancer is risk tolerance. It is a risky thing being a freelancer. Your money is not guaranteed. You can be just milking it one year and then the next year the industry is in the pits and you're not getting work and it doesn't have anything to do with how good or bad you are like sometimes the markets just fluctuate and it's a roller coaster so my advice is learn how to be good with money fast like stop caring about keeping up with the joneses and spending money on like travels and food and fancy things like save your money um, because that's money not only for you to survive on but it's money for you to reinvest in your own business and as your business grows you're gonna have crew to pay you're gonna have equipment to buy you're gonna have all these miscellaneous expenses that are quite expensive and you want to be able to afford them when you need them so being really conscious um, about money is important just being comfortable with lack of stability like Full-time jobs for a lot of people are really safe and stable and fulfilling, and that's great. Um, I just hated it, the stability side, the full-time job thing, I, could, I just hated everything about it. And so for me, it just feels really natural to be like wandering on my own, figuring this stuff out as I go. So I don't think, you know, it's a, it's a bad thing if you're not into that, but to be successful as a freelancer, you have to be so comfortable with the unknown. I think it's very possible to make a lot of money freelancing. I definitely make more as a freelancer than when I worked in Silicon Valley. And you know, I have many people be like, oh, photography sucks, there's no money in that. And I'm like, how do you think I pay my rent? Like, what? Um, so, you know, I am really fortunate in that I figured out how to make more money, much more money as a photographer than as a full-time tech employee. And I think it's very possible. It just depends on how hard you're willing to work. So, you know, maybe as a freelancer, you just want a couple of clients. Um, and maybe those clients are $5,000 a month retainer. But even then, you've just made $10,000 a month doing two clients and probably doing the same amount of work that you made in a full-time job. So like even on that most basic level, um, you can make more doing the same or maybe even less work on the client side, but you can't forget that you have all of the work in building and running your business. So you can make more, you can make a lot more. It's almost the sky's the limit, it's just a matter of how hard and how much are you willing to work. And if you like working, then that works out. I think the best thing uh, for me to happen to me as a freelancer is just getting paid, you know? Like, I, I'm still blown away that I can make a living taking pictures. That's crazy. And at the end of the day, as a freelancer, you have to survive, like, doing this for a living so you know i i think that money is incredibly important like if i didn't have it i wouldn't be able to do this so um just the fact that people are still willing to pay for creative services is it 
is always amazing to me. I would say, you know, the worst thing as a freelancer is uh, the moments where you have no money. That is, it's horrible. And uh, I wish that, you know, it would never happen, but it totally happens. I was really broke when I first started. You know, I, I literally recall the month after I quit my job uh, and I was in LA, I'd just gone to a conference and I, I needed to drive, rent a car and drive to my friend's birthday party in Palm Springs. And I overdrafted my bank account and I had literally negative $40 and I wasn't with friends so I like couldn't afford to buy lunch and I was hungry and I was like man like here I am like here's freelancing what am I gonna do and so I called my best friend and was crying and uh, she wired me 200 bucks so that I could rent a car and drive to Palm Springs um, and then she took me home to San Francisco. But it was just moments like that that could really, you know, make or break you. And and they'll probably happen. And they've happened to me since, you know? Um, and you just, you just have to be really good at surviving. Um, you have to be okay with maybe calling your best friend, crying, and getting $200 wired to you, and making that $200 last a long time. Um, you just have to be, you have to be ready for that and you have to be able to get through it and then you'll survive. Hey everybody, it's Dan here. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Freelance TV. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like below, join the conversation, leave a comment below, and of course, if you wanna see more of these videos, subscribe. Now you can also go to freelance.tv for more information, to see full transcripts of these videos, or just to join our freelance community. If you have any questions at all, or you don't follow along my upcoming documentary I'm filming on freelance, on Twitter and Instagram, I'm at Dan Petty. That's all I've got for now. Thank you again for watching this episode. We'll see you next time.